Hello and welcome to a special edition of the Blue Monday podcast. Um, I'm joined tonight by an ex-town player who made 382 appearances. Does that sound right? Um, scoring 21 goals and was inducted into the ITFC Hall of Fame in 2011. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to welcome to the podcast Mr. Russell Osman. Russell, you. bless you for coming on. Many thanks for coming on. Um, how are you? How, how how are things with you in this what lockdown three is it? Or well, certainly two yeah. or three? How is how you been? Uh, how you been coping with it all? Been coping okay. It's um, it's nice to see a little bit of uh, light at the end of the tunnel eventually. Yeah. Um, so sort of this time last year, I was just finishing a stint over in India, working on the uh, the Indian Super League. Of course, you were, yeah. And basically coming coming back, and getting away from uh, the COVID scare in India, and walking straight back into it once I arrived back in the UK, going into lockdown one, then two, then obviously three. Uh, and I will admit, I miss my golf. You know, I like uh, a game. Yeah, of me golf. too. Yeah. Yeah, miss that. I find that one hard one to to understand. Uh, you know, not even being allowed to go and play golf on your own. It's crazy, isn't it? My son actually works for English Golf Union. Um, oh, he's the sort of development officer for the county, and um, yeah, he's as mystified as everybody else. And there was intense lobbying from the um, you know from the EGU to to Parliament. But it's the same old thing. I think if they'd relaxed the rules on golf, then other sports wouldn't want it to follow. So I still can't understand now. You know, we still have to wait another month for it, for goodness sake. You know, it seems crazy, really. Yeah, it, it's it's a strange one. You can walk around a golf course. Um, you can walk around with a golf club <laughs> or golf ball in your pocket, but you can't. Yeah, ball can't with miss it. You know, so I just, I can understand the word about people congregating at the club and travelling to the course and stuff like That's that. That's what it is. That's a problem, yeah. Yeah, if it was just limited to... You can only play on your own, um, mm. then fine. Yeah, you know, right. distance on the practice ground, for example. Sure. Did you I know. did I did I read somewhere recently you've moved back this way now? I have done. Yeah, I uh, sold up in in Bristol, um, which was a little bit of a surprise. Really, we we were toying with the idea of coming back and uh, thinking about putting the house on the market and. All of a sudden, we had a somebody approach us about buying the house, and we thought, ideal, it's perfect. And uh, this person wanted the the house lock, stock, and barrel. Uh, oh wow! Uh, an interior designer as well. So uh, we thought it couldn't have happened at a better time. Yeah. And at the moment, I'm just uh, renting somewhere um, just outside Woodbridge. And we'll start looking for somewhere to move into permanently, with, you know, in the near future. Oh, fantastic! So, have you have you joined somewhere around here, golf course, or not yet? Well, I'm a, I'm a country member at Woodbridge. Lovely, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and the beauty is that I was a member at Woodbridge back in the, the late seventies, early eighties. Anyway, ah, there you go. Okay. So, in a way, it's like going home. Um, yeah, brilliant. I mean, Charlie Woods, uh, yeah. was a member of Woodbridge for a long time, and his great friend, John Marks, uh, who oh, yeah, of course, yeah, away a while ago. John was like, you know, not only a lovely fellow, but a magnificent golfer as well. Yeah, he was, yeah, yeah. You know, I see Steve Weimark up there, he used to be the pro at Purdis. That's um, right, yeah, yeah. That's where I play. I play at Purdis, and my, my boys play at Purdis. Well, um, Ray, East, Ray East has dragged me around there a few times lately. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, often see no. him. Often, no. often see him up there. No, it's a great game. And, um, yeah, we look forward to we look forward to it coming back. But yeah, we're, not, we're going to talk about football, haven't we? We're not really here to talk about golf. Although the, my, my colleagues at the pod always moan, moan at me because there's one or two of us. There's about six of us, really. There's um, six or seven of us that um, sort of uh, work on the podcast. And there's a couple of us who are really fairly keen on golf. And they despair when we go into sort of golf mode and sometimes in a cricket mode as well. So we better yeah. concentrate. So if I just if I you know take you back, Russell, um, you know, um obviously born in born in Derbyshire, born in Repton in Derbyshire. Yeah. Interestingly growing up, and it's a it's a fairly well known story, you kind of had to make a choice between rugby and football. Um I didn't really have to make a choice. No. You know, I, I was at uh, grammar school, Burton yeah. Burton on Trent Grammar School and I played for uh 
Staffordshire at uh, rugby and cricket and uh, the rugby went very well and I, I played for England under 15s and under yeah. 16s, you know, a captain aside. Um, <laughs> and I played for my local football side on a Sunday, which was, um, <laughs> you know, we grew up in a village called Repton where a big public school is. And uh, the village had a, a senior side called uh, called Retton Casuals. That was a, the name of the club. And they started a junior side, I think, when I was about seven or eight. So I managed to continue playing for them for a few years. And they was actually playing for Repton Casuals senior side when I was 15 in uh, a Derby district uh, cup final. Yeah. Um, I think somebody had... Uh, spoken to Bobby Robson about me and he asked somebody to go and watch the game and we won the game and I played quite well I must have played quite well <laughs> and after that I got invited down to to Ipswich and it all went from there. Fantastic absolutely fantastic I mean were there any was Ipswich really your you know were there any other opportunities or Ipswich that was it you know you're invited there and that was you know that was pretty much it for you. I went to I went to Chelsea for for hmm. A week, but um, I tore all my ankle ligaments um, sort of first day's training, which was ah. it was very strange, you know, because I ended up on on crutches, and it was like the only ankle injury I ever had in my career. I mean, yeah, many injuries. Mm -hmm. Certainly, in your town, you know, I was looking earlier, you know, doing a, you know, just looking for your town career. And you really, you really, you were blessed with it, you know, blessed with injuries. You really were not, you know, really didn't suffer at all, did you? Uh, not really. Oh, I did, but you know, but, well, you played through it, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I had a couple of um, horrific shin injuries and yeah. stuff like that, you know, with a lot of stitches, but a lot of lacerations, broken noses, not tissue, and, not tissue injuries, soft tissue injuries that you know forced you out pretty much. You know, you didn't have any of those. No, uh, later on, I had a couple of cartilage um, issues, yeah. but um, you know, I. I, I I think I broke a toe and a hand when I was at Ipswich, but those were the sort of things you could get away with having an injection and just yeah, off you go. So your first, so you were still a schoolboy. I mean, you you played and you were involved in the seventy four, seventy five youth cup winning side as as still as like you were like fifteen, yeah. Yeah, against West Ham, well, um, Alan, Alan Kirbisley was uh, the right. captain of uh, West Ham. You know, so yeah, it was great. And obviously in the Ipswich side, there was, I mean, Walkie, John Walk, um, David Geddes, I think, Keith Burchin, so a good yeah. side, very good side. Yeah, some, some good lads, great lads there. Yeah. Was that, the, just just quickly, was that after that when John Cobbold made his famous speech to the parents about, you know, going <laughs> procreate for another, for the next side coming up in 16 years or not? Or was that, I know they won it a couple of years before, was it that evening or was it the previous? I think it was that evening, yeah. <laughs> Up the club, Absolute, <laughs> absolute classic. So, so and and your you know your first impressions of Ipswich and Bobby Robson and you know after that obviously you're signing as you know you're signing then as a professional. I mean, how was that? And and also you know obviously the key centre half pairing at the time, you know Hunter and Beatty. How what sort of influence do they have on you? Well, one one important thing that I I'd just like to mention is that you know Ipswich went the extra mile to get good players to the club, good young players. And in my case, living up in Burton on Trent, it was it was quite a it was quite a long journey from, from Ipswich uh, to Burton and, and vice versa. And I was having a lot of time uh, away from school because of my rugby commitments with uh, you know Staffordshire yeah, in England. Yeah, in England, yeah. And the headmaster wasn't too pleased with me trying to get off uh, school on a Friday so that I could go and play down in Ipswich on the Saturday morning for the youth team. So Charlie Woods used to drive up from Ipswich Friday lunchtime to pick me up wow. late Friday afternoon. Christ. Drive all the way straight back to Ipswich. I used to stay in his house and Terry stayed there as well. Terry came down from Lowestoft. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'd play the next day. And then straight after the game, I jump in the back of Charlie's car again, and Charlie would drive me all the way back up to to home. Now that Just, was like about a 
a four-hour journey each oh, way. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely, Russell. That is just unbelievable and, and such an indictment of the club back then and maybe the club now when I don't see – I don't know if you yeah. read the interview or saw the interview with a young lad last week who's had real sort of serious mental problems after being – allegedly, you know, mistreated perhaps by the academy. Yes, the, so the, sad, sad to see that. that. Yeah, the game's rife with that sort of issue. Oh, no, know, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, fair it's, play for the it, lad to come out yeah. and speak about it, I guess. Yeah, yeah it's, it's that, just, that's it's, just an incredible story. That is unbelievable story. And yeah, you mentioned, obviously, so Terry Butcher there. I mean, was it an immediate, you know, did you strike an immediate friendship, your, you know, immediate partnership with, you know, you and... Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we know latterly it was such a great partnership. But was that an immediate thing with you two? Um, we we got on on well together, both on the pitch and off the pitch. You know, and I think the partnership on the pitch uh, developed over time. And I think getting on well together off the pitch helped that. You know, I think we we understood um, the way we thought really about the game and. Uh, and playing together a lot, it helps you sort of anticipate what your, your partner's going to do. Yeah, partnerships, yeah. Yeah, yeah very but, but, but th there was great emphasis with the football club that, you know, those partnerships weren't just the partnership of the two centre-halves. Yeah, right through. With the left side centre-half, you'd have a partnership with the left-back as well. Yeah. And the two centre-halves would have a partnership with your, believe it or not, your defensive midfield player, Johnny Wall. <laughs> We used to score 30 odd goals a bloody season somehow from a defensive midfield <clears throat> position. So those partnerships were created all round <clears throat> the, yeah. the 10 outfield players, plus your involvement with the goalkeeper. And you, you complimented each other so well. I mean, you were obviously you were very much two footed, but I guess predominantly right footed. Or maybe not, maybe not. But, you know, so obviously with Terry Butcher, obviously very much predominantly left-footed. You just seem yeah. to complement each other so well. As did Beatty and Hunter, I guess, with Beat obviously Beat protect, you know, predominantly left-foot, Hunter predominantly right-foot. You just, you know, both partnerships seem to complement each other so, yeah, so I well. I was naturally a right-footed player. Yeah. But yeah. when I was a kid, my best mate was left-footed. And we used to have competitions all the time yeah. involving in trying to improve your, your week of foot. Yeah. You know, we used to live in an old um, farm, you know, and he was like trying to kick it through the stable door or the, the, the old barn window where you, you yeah. reek a foot and stuff like that. Yeah. A bit by a bit, I was saying, you know, my left foot now is as good as my right foot was, you know, and I get a little bit annoyed where players are so limited at the moment. Uh -huh. and, Look totally one-sided. I'm exactly the same. Don't stop me. I obviously never played anywhere near your level, but yeah, I was, I, I was pride myself on being. My father was that. You need to get if you're going to play football, you need to be two-footed, and it will take you. You know, you'll you'll get a game anywhere if you're two-footed. Yeah. And yeah, it annoys it annoys the hell out of me as well when you see it so one-footed. It's just amazing, really. But I guess maybe incentives not there to put the to put the hard yards in as you do. Yeah. So you make your you know you obviously you're developing now, and you make your first team debut in. Um, Fairly early 70, 70, well, 77, 78 season um, against Chelsea. Um, and this is, I guess, a feature. Um, you know, that was a season where Kevin Beatty, I think his injuries really, really started to kick in that season. And he pretty much was just wheeled out for the European games and the cup matches. Um, do you remember much about your debut, Russell? I don't remember much about the game apart from, uh, you know, we won 1 0 and Brian Tolbert scored. Yeah. Um, yeah. But in those days, uh, John Penalty had been playing in the first team. Um, yep. The late Dale Roberts, yeah. fantastic fella, Dale had played for the first team. Yeah. Um, and I'd had a good run of games in the youth team and, and the reserve setup. Now, this is the benefit of playing reserve team football, was the fact oh, that, that level. At, yeah. by that time, I got used to playing against men. You know, well, I got used to the physical stuff playing rugby. Yeah. But I got beat up one day by a fellow at Chelsea called Bill Gardner. Yeah, Bill Gardner, yeah. yeah. In the reserve team game. And he <laughs> beat seven bells of crap out of me for 90 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. But it taught me a lesson. You just had to yeah. pick yourself up and get on with it and give as good as you got. But, you know, you're so right what you say, Russell. You know, those those kind of football combination with it, those games where, obviously, yeah. first team are away next Saturday and they're probably drawing, I don't know, 1,500. I mean, I used to go down with my mates. You know, we're younger and we, you know, two young craps to go away. We used to go down 
And I, you know, I, I tell some of my younger friends now that I've seen Glenn Hoddle play for Spurs in the football company. I think I've seen Liam yeah. Brady play for Arsenal. You know, you were playing against, you know, because there was no other way. Players were coming back, long injury layoffs, and they needed, you know, they needed the reserve. Yeah. Now, you know, it wasn't any of this behind closed doors. They played in the reserves in the football combination. And I saw yeah. some fantastic players. And I think yeah. also that also stems through, you know, the youth football, you know, the standard of the, what was the Southeast Counties League back then. I mean, all these yeah. players, yourself, you know, all these players came through that terrific standard, unbelievable yeah. standard. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it, you know, I played against Glenn Hoddle, you know, when, when we we're about 15 years old. <laughs> and when you play against him in the first team, you play against him in the reserves. Yeah, so you, uh, yeah. you play with him at international level. I've got, I've got to confess, one of my favourite ever English players, probably. But so, so we're into the cup. You're making your debut, um, and you get, you're getting a fair run of cup games here. Obviously, Kevin, you know, Kevin Beatty, like I said, you know, injuries are kicking in, and also, and I think Alan Hunter as well. Yeah. And you yeah. play a fair few games in the cup run. I mean, I think you'll, you play four out of in the early rounds. I think you'll play, you played four of the games. I believe you missed Hartley Paul at home. Beat was back for that, but you're fairly, um, you know, you're appearing, you make a decent level of appearances in the cup yeah. run. I'm, um, I'm missing the semi final in the final, really. Well, yeah. Now, my question to you is how close were you to playing in the final, do you think? Because obviously, you know, the, it's the fable story of Al Big Al having his fitness test in the corridor of the hotel or out on the lawn in the hotel early in the morning. I mean, as far as you're concerned, he fails that. You're going to play, aren't you? Yeah. Or is he never um, going to fail it? It was never going to fail it. You know, <laughs> it was once in a lifetime opportunity for both Alan and Kevin to play in the yeah. FA Cup final. Yeah. And knowing the character of the, the two of them, they they would have played. Yeah. You know, and neither of them were 100% fit. No. But both those two players knew that by declaring themselves fit, they would be fit enough to get through the ninety minutes of the game, so and no, and no disrespect to you, such a boost for the for the oh. lads and such a you know the Arsenal players would look at that and think, well, yeah, well, yeah certainly they, McDonald's, they did McDonald's it. certainly do. Yeah, but they weren't jeopardising no. the result by playing yeah. either. You yeah. know, they they were strong character. You got Johnny Walk in the starting eleven anyway, who um, played centre half before many times. Oh, good point. Yeah, he just dropped back, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose um, once he was declared fit, then it kind of made sense for Mick Lambert to, to be on the yeah. bench, yeah? Yeah, it's no yeah. brain there. You know, that, yeah. that that silly old rule of only having one sub. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I can't, I'll be watching it this season on the games on I follow and five subs. You think, wow, what is, oh. you know, what's, what's going on? What's going on? So yeah. really, so, you know, cup final super... I mean, and then the team starts to evolve, you know, and you're really established now. I think 78, 79, you know, you made just about 40, 39 league appearances. Um, obviously, your partnership with, you know, is, is, is obviously Big Al is getting older and, again, the injuries with, with Kevin Beattie. Um, yeah. your, you know, your partnership with Terry Terry sort of Terry Butcher is flourishing. Um, how about the, um, you know, obviously early season 78, um, complete change of style when, when, the, when Arnold, when the first of the Dutchman comes in, Arnold Murin. I mean, can you remember much about that, how that was perceived and how things, I mean, it's seemingly almost changed overnight where famously he says in his first game was the game against Liverpool at home and you get beat 3-0 and he says, well, the ball's over my head and if the ball's not over my head, I'm chasing Terry McDermott up and down the park sort of thing, you know. Um, can you remember much about the, the evolution following that and the change that brought? Yeah, it didn't happen overnight. Um, but I think... When you look at the, the squad of players that we had, yeah. I think you could say they were very um, football intelligent players. Yeah, uh, they understood the game and they they worked off each other very very well. So it wasn't long before Alan Brazil knew that if he made a run to get him behind the defence, get the ball, he could trust Arnold Muir and <laughs> to see it. And Arnold yeah. said that. Uh, Alan Brazil, he said, Alan, you make the run. I will send the pass when I think the pass is right to deliver and at the right time. Fantastic. You know, because Alan started making runs and hesitating because he wasn't sure whether Arnold had seen him. Arnold just said to him, you made the run. I've seen you. Yeah, but I, will decide, right. I will decide when the pass is played. 
Absolute genius. You know, Absolute Franz, genius. Franz was different, you know, the way that he could take people out of the game by dribbling around them. Arnold would take people out of the game by passing around them. So that's what football is. It's about getting the numerical advantage by taking people out of the game. Well, again, partnership. And again, another partnership there, I guess. I mean, what was it like to train against those two? And what was it like to, for instance, you know, one of the greatest all-round centre-forwards I've had, I think he had everything as I've seen as uh, Ipswich, is Paul Marin. I mean, what was it like in training? Would he, would he give it out in training? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it, we... Um, yeah, you were very respectful in training that you could go in as hard as you like on anybody. But, yeah. you know, it had to be fair. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, as many occasions I saw Keith Birching get chased into the back of the goal net by Alan Hunter because <laughs> Keith had caught him with a, an accidental elbow. <laughs> had to be dragged apart minutes later. Yeah, um, just... But man, oh God bless him, you know, he's having a bit of a battle at the moment. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, we, must, we must send our best to, to, to Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awful. yeah. absolutely. You know, but a great, a great leader of the line for us. Uh, I... You know, Honestly, it, it, Russell, I think probably in my time, the best, well, not, not just because I'm an Ipswich fan, but one of the best all-round centre-forwards, I think, has been just had everything, didn't he? In the air, quite quick, strong, wasn't he? And, and yeah, I could give it out when he needed to be. And, I, you know, I she, don't think I've, I've played with any, well, I don't think I've played with a centre-forward that's been as brave as Paul was. Yeah. yeah. He would go in with goalkeepers, you know, to try and get the final touch, knowing that he's going to have seven bells knocked out of him yeah and he would go in he'd pick himself up dust himself down yeah and do it again the next week and the next week and the week after that he's just 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 outstanding outstanding player so we move on 79 80 and again the sides evolving and and building up as we know um i think this is where you start your ever present run and then look i mean this is what i really want to speak about and i drive my fellow podcasters they're all younger than me absolutely crazy we get to 80, 81, Russell. So, do you yeah. remember much? I mean, obviously, and and just just take me back to pre-season and, and your um your sort of brief flirtation with um with the sort of stage and screen. <laughs> um, well, um, escape to victory. That that was good fun. Yeah, that was great fun. Um, yeah. and it was it was just. I mean, we were playing a lot of football at the time. Um, had a hard season, you know, but we we were allowed to go out there and play some more football. Yeah. Um, we went with the, the manager's permission. Um, persuaded one way or the other to uh, allow us to go out there. And for me, it was a great experience of being able to you know, play through the summer with Pele and Bobby Moore, Mike Summerby. Yes, incredible. Where, where was the sorry? Where was the filming done again? Was it Romania? Was it Romania? No. Budapest. Yeah, sorry, bit of Hungary. Yeah, Budapest. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Um. So, and just quickly, did Pele do that overhead kick in one take, or is that just a is that a fable? <laughs> we did it in. We did it you in don't normal. Need to give it away. No, we did it in normal play. Wow. And he produced an outstanding overhead kick. That was magnificently saved by oh, Laurie Siddle. No. <laughs> Bottom left right. hand corner. Fantastic yeah. save. Yeah. You know, from Laurie, but you know. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, brilliant. It just got set up again. Bobby Moore crossed another ball, and the next one fizzed over the crossbar. Third time, you know, fizzed in the top corner. Wow. So every time a decent strike, anyway. Yeah. 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 Gee, yeah. Absolute, absolute, absolute yeah. genius. So, look, we get to the 80-81 season. I mean, was there, can you remember, was there, you know, expectation that, look, boys, this is our this is our season, you know? You know, you'd slowly been built, building up to it. Obviously, the season before, obviously, 70, um, sorry, yeah, 78, 79, the two Dutchmen coming in. You now worked the season with them. And really, I think the running you had, you know, the, in the 1980 season, which included, obviously, the... Yeah. A six nil Man U game, and one of the great games, which you think was a four nil win at Everton, which which no TV footage of it at all. But yeah. I've got friends that went to that game and said probably in the whole Robson era that was one of the greatest ever performances, and including apparently a special goal from Eric Gates, which again there's no footage of. But one of the mm. one, you know, one of the great games, one of the great goals. So by the time we get you know pre season, you're you know you're back from you're back from filming. Um, was the expectation there for the season? 
No, not really. Ah. I think okay. it was um, it was just back to work as normal. Yeah. Um, Pre-season for us at Ipswich was always very hard. Yeah. Um, and people forget that we were we were an exceptionally fit, strong side. Yeah. You no. Know, yes, we 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 could play football, but you know we could compete with people physically on the pitch. Um, so if the going got tough, you know we could uh, look after ourselves on that front. If we were playing on heavy pitches, you know we weren't going to run out of stamina because by this time we got a you know a very good level of fitness built into us all. Yeah. So when the season came around, and I think we started off with a very very good run of unbeaten games i was at the um, first was, yeah i was at the first away game leicester was it um walk john walk scored quite a late clay i think dominated the game from memory scored a really quite late win on a boiling hot day i remember gates crossed it in yeah yeah you know and it, it just seemed to go from game to game um result to result and we you start to get um a little bit of belief in the squad and the team that it's if we go a goal down, we've got he enough energy in the side to just, you know, drop a gear and, you know, pick up a bit more momentum and get the result that that we need. And um, like I say, everybody seemed to be on the same level of of thinking of how the game is going to be played. We didn't worry too much about the opposition. Mm -hmm. We just knew that if we were uh, playing well ourselves, then we've got every chance of getting the results yeah and, and that was it you know we we were uh we were sort of reliant on the majority of our players playing well week in week out not everybody but you, you know your teammate and your partner alongside you would pull you through the game sometimes yeah i mean it's, i mean two things really how i mean well, i'd like to just dwell on particular week because Believe, um, um, believe it or not, um, uh, it's a purely coincidence, but 40 years ago, pretty much to tonight, was the game in St Etienne. I mean, I think it was the 4th of March. So it's the 3rd of March. So corresponding day, actually, the Wednesday. Yeah. So this Wednesday, yeah. 40 years ago. But just just before that, how how crucial do you think was the injury, you know, to George Burley at Shrewsbury that put him out for this, that put him out for the season? I mean, that was, uh, you know, obviously Steve McCall came in and Steve McCall could cover, you know, obviously various positions, but... And obviously Mick Mills moved across, but yeah, that was a to me that was a fairly crucial injury. It was a it was a cruel, cruel yeah. blow for George, um, a devastating blow for, for for George and the team really because George was an integral part of Great player. the the experience of the side, yeah, um, a, a quality full back who delivered fantastic balls into the strikers. Um, and into the 18 yard box. Um, and I think we felt it more and more as we got towards the end of the season. Yes, we managed to hang on and win the UEFA Cup, but there were times when fixture congestion got to us. We, you know, we needed a little bit more strength in depth, you know, and then with yeah. George missing. Alan Hunter didn't play a lot of games that year. Kevin Beach had broken his arm in the the Man City replay. Um, you know, so when you're getting right to the the crux of the matter towards the the last eight ten games of the season, we were we were sort of running on on thin air, really. I mean, it's just incredible when you look at that season. I think you'd lost only two league games going into pretty much mid mid to late mid to late March. Yeah. And I've just got, I just really, if you indulge me, I just want to dwell. I mean, this was probably one of my, getting into it, so four years ago at this very moment, was probably one of my favourite ever two-week spells of supporting Ipswich, where um, I think you scored, I went to this game, horrible day, you won 4-0 at Coventry. I remember you scored, I think Les Seeley sort of fumbled a header from you. I think Steve McCall scored a thumping goal. Then, then, so, you, so you win 4-0, 4-0 at, uh, at Highfield Road. Then you go to St Etienne midweek and beat them 4-1. And then on the Saturday, I mean, this is how it was that season, the Saturday, 
one of my favourite ever Ipswich Town games was the 3-3 draw at, at Forest, which was just Forest, absolutely yeah. unbelievable game. And yeah. then and then this is how Ipswich was in those days. The replay, which was brilliant in those days, what, four days later, three days later on the Tuesday, where we beat Forest with a mirror and volley. And then we beat Spurs 3-0 the following Saturday. So it's just incredible, yeah. absolutely yeah. incredible. I mean, in 14 days, we had one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> five, five fixtures in 14 days. Incredible. Four of them quarterfinals. Yeah. One of them being a replay. Yeah. And the, the, the odd one in the middle of all that was a game against some team called Tottenham Hotspurs, you know, <laughs> when, when we won that one 3 0. So. And Mills, and the crucial thing in that game was Mick Mills did his shoulder, didn't he? So Mick Mills dislocated his shoulder and misses, I think, the next. Certainly, two or two or three games. Russell, can you just take me back? Watch, tell me, can you take me back to the St. Etienne game? What do you remember about that? I mean, no, there's not really not many people I know that went. There's, there's a particular person I know, a good friend of mine that did go, and he said the atmosphere before the game. He said it was quite not a massive stadium. He said, but it was just absolutely. You know, the crowd had been in there. I don't know two or three hours before. It's absolutely in a frenzy. Um, They'd never been beaten at home in something like, I don't know, was it 30 games or something like that? We've never yeah. been beaten in Europe at home before. I mean, what was your, and you know, you're up against um, Michel, okay, young, but Michel Platini, Johnny Rep, great, great players, and half the French team really back then. I mean, well, what, are your memories, what are your memories of that game? Well, we're just coming off a run of eight wins back to back. <laughs> yeah. And we're going away to just an etching. So we weren't, Exactly, too worried about St. Etienne. <laughs> you know, we'd we'd gone home and away, and we'd we'd yeah, won games left, right, and centre. You know, so what we didn't need, we didn't need to do much training in those days. I think the right. day before the game, we had a little yeah. wander around the town and had a couple of small beers and a game of French <laughs> ball. You know, in one of the local bars, and yeah, just a little chill out and. Uh, a bit of a relax, most of the lads. Um, we went into it in a very, very relaxed manner. Um, yeah. You look at the St. Etchian record, it, it was very similar to the Ipswich Town record of mm. uh, not losing European games, you know, on their own turf. Pitch was awful. You know, and that's where I come back to the fitness levels that we had at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we eventually we played sixty six games, but this was probably about game number forty. You know, and it was, it was in, probably you know yeah. about you know three or four inches of mud, more reminiscent of the baseball ground than anywhere yeah. else. And we went a goal down. You know, Johnny Rep got a header. Uh, I think it was a header. Um, I think it was. I've seen the footage. A great header as well. Yeah, Brilliant and all, yeah. all of a sudden, that sort of, I think that woke us up a little bit. <laughs> you know, made yeah. us realise that. Hold on a minute. You know, we need to get a grip of this game, otherwise, you know, it might run away from us. Especially with, like you say, Johnny Rep, Platini, uh, Larios, Jambion, yeah. um, and some of the players there. They great had players. Great players. Inside. See, they yeah. won the they won the French title that year. Yeah. You know, when we played Cologne, Cologne, were they runners up in the Bundesliga that year as well? So they had, to tell you who else they had in that side, they had the fullback that got cleared out by um, uh, Schumacher. They had, um, I think, Battison played fullback as well, didn't Batisson, they? Yeah. 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 So it was, <clears throat> I think, when we got back on level terms we, pretty quickly. And then. Once we got our noses in front, it was a case of, oh come on, you know, let's <laughs> let's let's make the most of this now, you know. And it was we we had a little bit of a not an issue, but we we had to find a way of dealing with uh, Platini, you know, with his role in playing off the striker, sort yeah, of that, a, that almost like ten role, as we say now, yeah, yeah. yeah. But because. We always played with Eric Gates in that role. You know, we sort of knew how best to play against that, if you can understand yeah. what I yeah, mean. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, it was basically down to myself and Johnny Walk that just who, whoever was closest to him Picked at the time dealt, dealt with him. 
Yeah. No, and, and that's what we did. You know, Walkie was nicking things in front of him, and I was making sure I was as close to him as need be if he ever did get the ball, and then hold him up, and then Johnny would come back and bail me out and nick it off him. <laughs> you know, and it worked quite well. Fantastic. And some great goals in that game, too. You know, um, yeah. Murin's left foot shot. I mean, Walkie's head is just ridiculous. He sort of powers it in the far corner. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. And then I say the following Saturday, that 3-3 Cup quarterfinal game at Forest is one of my favourite ever. Probably one of the best Ipswich games I think I've ever I've ever seen. Um, yeah, we go 2-0 up and Trevor Francis that day for a spell of about, I don't know, half an hour was just unplayable. Just unbelievable. As well, he, he used to jump so high that you, you couldn't kick him. So <laughs> that's why he As he could be. And then, you know, it's all written when Tyson gets the sort of fairly, we're not saying we didn't deserve it because I think we did overall, but, you know, got the fairly lucky equaliser and then, you know, the replay down at Portman Road. Brilliant, brilliant times. Absolutely yeah. brilliant times. And just, you know, again, probably the most impressive result was, I remember going absolutely heartbroken, you know, going from one of my sort of favourite games to one of my most horrible games of my Ipswich support. The Easter Monday game went absolutely decimated by injury. You lose to a Justin Fashion who goal at Norwich. But then, but then two days later, or straight away, you're over in Cologne for the second leg, just protecting a very sort of slender 1-0 lead, which, you know, let's face it, yeah. that season, you know, going into these away away legs, you've, you've built up you know, 3-0 against Bohemians, 5-0 against Witsev Lodz, 5 against Salonika. So you'd always had a buffer. But so going into that game, it was a lot, a lot tighter. And also coming off the back of the crushing disappointment of the game at Norwich. Yeah, I think by, by that time we'd... We sort of realised that most European sides, um, when they played away from home, that was the best time to get a few goals past them. But don't underestimate them at home. And we found out that to our, to our cost along the way. You know, we might have won the first leg three nil at home and mm. lost the second leg two nil away. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That was never the same side that played sort of a week earlier. <laughs> yeah. earlier you know, completely different. A lot yeah. of teams just didn't travel well. Yeah. So we got used to that. And and going out to Cologne, it was one of those things again. We played we played Norwich, we played Arsenal, we played Norwich. We we had to go straight out to Germany after the game because uh if I'm not mistaken, um what was it, Norwich on the 20th and the Cologne game on the 22nd? Just crazy. Absolutely crazy. You know, yeah. so we played the game, fly out. Yeah. We went around an amusement park the following That's the story. Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, again, there's no need to train. It was a case of uh, how best do you recover in time for, for the next year. And you've got to remember, in those days, we never had a, a masseur. No, no where, of course you know, not. The team of masseurs giving everybody a, a rub down after one game or ice you baths know. or any of this. You, know, you, had, you had Tommy Eggleston with a bucket and a sponge, didn't you? That was it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, full stop. So there's no luxury of having a, a massage and putting your feet up for the day and, <laughs> and any of that. So <clears throat> it was an amusement park, chill out early night, um, and then just get on with the game. Yeah. Yeah. So you win there. So, I mean, what an incredible win, what an incredible lift. But by this time, the team is, you know, injury wise, is just falling apart. And do you, I mean, are you, are you one that sort of holds with the thought that perhaps, I don't know, you wouldn't have the great memories of the cup run. And, and again, the dis we won't dwell on the game at, at Villa Park, you know, the, well, again, we should do because the game, again, I mean, that was incredible in, in, in itself. I mean, the game, at, again, went to both. The game at Villa Park, the crushing disappointment of losing to Man City. Yeah, going back yeah. there, what, three days later and beating yeah. Villa in what was billed as a title decider. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, we we had a quite a few good bounce back results during that season. Yeah. Um Are you dominating you know, the cup semi final you absolutely dominated, didn't you? It's just heartbreak again, you know, heartbreak really that you just didn't just, just couldn't get the goal. Yeah. I mean that that was surprising because Kevin Beatty had a a clear header from just outside the six yard box. It, it, it jumped about two foot higher than anybody else. Right. And he headed the ball down correctly, middle of the goal. The pitch was very firm and the ball bounced <laughs> over the crossbar. 
unbelievable. I was I was also there a season or so before at Everton when he scores that goal. Um, I think you flick it on at the near post when he scores that goal from above the crossbar. Yeah, it's it's fine. Bit, yes. Yeah, it's fine. ridiculous. Also, I mean, Paul Power scoring a free kick. Probably never and done it again. How many free kicks did Paul Power score in his career? <laughs> yeah. Eric Gates, it was a worldly as well, wasn't it? Absolute yeah. worldly as well. Eric Gates giving a free kick away. Eric Gates never gave free kicks away. No, not near the own box. No. No, no, just, just, in, just, just incredible. But look, you know, at least at, you know at the end of what what is acknowledged is okay. We talk about you know, obviously sixty one, sixty two, and the great Alf Ramsey side winning the championship. But all round, this is probably the greatest season in in town's history. And it was just justice that you know, again, you had a brilliant first leg against um against AZ. You know, got the goals which they basically needed, and yeah. um and you know got the trophy that obviously. Obviously, the team deserve. Just quickly, Russell, do you do you also hold with the thought that perhaps the worst re one of the worst results perversely you've had all season was to beat Villa in the cup third round? <laughs> if you get me drift, so you know when you say, I mean, you were ever present for all sixty six games, yeah. and I think Villa's Villa's final total was four, so twenty two more games. I think we played than Villa that know. season. Funny, Just, it? It's mind boggling, isn't it? It's just one of those things at the end of the day I know. You, know, you can only play the games as they come along and you know which is sad the way the game's played now because whether it was a european tie fa cup league cup uh first division game they were all treated with the same amount of respect yeah absolutely you know and yeah. the side the club the manager Treated each fixture with the same amount of respect and went out to win every every game that was, that was put in front of them. Yeah. And that's it's a very did. good point you, you made. You know, no, no such thing as rotation. Well, the squad wasn't there for rotation, was it? No, no, you didn't need. Oh, look, listen, look at the Ipswich Town side over the last four games. That's not rotated very no, much. Not, it? <laughs> yeah, I think you know, all this. Excuse my language. Crap about rotation and you know somebody Luke Chambers not being able to play Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. Give me a break. He, he's the the fittest pro they've got down there, and he's a, so, a, yeah. Hardened, yeah. a hardened, seasoned professional player who will play yeah. week in, week out, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, all season long if you wanted him to. Yeah, as has yeah. now been proven. I mean, what was it, what was it like? And you remember, obviously, you know, you know, you actually win the UEFA Cup. Obviously, a sense of relief for you all that at least we've got something, and um, you know, you know, certainly something for the you know the manager, you know, deserved it. Obviously, he got the FA Cup, but you know, he's so so he's so he obviously so wanted to win the league. He persuades Arnold yeah. Muren to stay for a for another season, and obviously, you have a really good go at it the next season. And you just can't legislate for Liverpool winning what was it thirteen out of the last fourteen games or something like that. Just again, just ridiculous, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Uh and at the time, you know, we, you'd say we were getting to be as good and as consistent as Liverpool, you know, in yeah. our European appearances and league appearances. Yeah. We had great games against them. You know, and credit where credit's due. They had a, a wonderful side. Um, and they, you know, they were pretty dominant at the time. Uh, they were the team to beat. Um I remember playing up at uh, Anfield one day when Arnhem Muir and threw a big lump of, uh, no, 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 and Franz Tyson threw a big lump of mud at the ball. Uh, the spot. <laughs> yeah, when Terry McDermott was about to take the penalty, he hit the ball and, you know, the ball yeah. went sky high over the crossbar. I'll tell, but, I'll, I'll tell you no, what, Russell, yeah, Kenny, yeah. Dal Kenny Dalgleish had a liking for us, didn't he? He scored, especially at Portman Road, he scored some unbelievable goals at Portman Road, didn't he? Yeah, and I played a bit of golf with Kenny. Kenny's a great, great fella, you know, yeah. but hard. Boy, you know, you think okay, he was yeah. passy on the pitch, but Christ, what a, a typical Glaswegian. <laughs> I mean, real, real tough guy that can look after himself. Great yeah, player. Nice what player. a great player. Again, another example, two-footed player, isn't he? Absolutely great player. Couldn't yeah. tell what his strongest foot was. Yeah, right foot. <laughs> <laughs> just quick, I mean, just quickly, Russell, just before we yeah, just before we get on. Um, who would you say was your most um yeah, hardest opponent to play against all round. Not just saying tough, but you know, would it have been Dalgleish, for instance, or who would who would you say who always gave us your who always gave you personally your toughest game? If I wasn't, if I wasn't on my metal, then everybody was tough. 
Yeah. Um, if I was probably at it, you know, with concentration and everything, then, you know, you'd fancy yourself against anybody. But the rush, the rush, Dalglish partnership <laughs> was, you know, it just kept you on your toes all the time because they niggle at you, you know, and Russia would niggle at you and it got this habit of clipping your heels and being able to get away with it, you know, chase you down. That was their first line of defence, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. Um, a very Billy quick rush, Billy, rush, very quick, yeah. Quicker thought yeah, and quicker. Yeah, off. Very, very quick. Billy yeah. Whitehurst, if you played, so <laughs> Billy Whitehurst played. Billy yeah. Whitehurst, uh, Mick Harford. Yeah. The hardest people I've ever played against. Cool. Yeah. Joe Jordan, um, oh, wow. Joe's a great fella, you know. Yeah. So physically, um, they come into that bracket. Uh, obviously, playing against Cruyff and uh, Neeskins, and oh, they were Barcelona. Yeah, of course, Platini. Yeah, yeah, um, oh, wow. yeah. So, and um, just trying to think. Oh, there's, there's been some good ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, that you know, you, you just missed out, unfortunately, on the title that year. Obviously, you know, Bobby Robson leaves with everyone's blessing for um, you know, for the mm. for the England job. Bobby Ferguson takes over from within. And then obviously we're then getting to the point where the players, you know, we built the pioneer stand and for one reason or another, you know, the players are on contracts and the players start to leave. I mean I mean, and you to be fair, you, you I think you you stayed certainly another three or four seasons left. Eighty five, I think eight four eight five, I believe you left to Leicester. I mean, a real big, you know, you must have seen people like Paul Mariner going, Johnny Walk going, obviously the Dutchman are long gone, and Brazil. I mean, it was a tough time, yeah. It was tough, um, but we were still trying to compete um oh, excellent. yeah inside the high school stadium we'd had the european ban we'd battled yeah. for this down we'd gone lots out of the european games early uh and it was tough you know it was it was tough that bobby robson went in the manner he did um i think the side deserved to stay together a little bit longer to, to to have another go at winning the the title, um, yeah. Arne Muren uh, just packed his bags and went straight up to Manchester United, and you know the club never got a penny for him or anything, uh, which was yeah, a tough one. That you know, reflection of what was going on at the time, you know, it, it was like yeah, yeah, Bobby's gone and nobody's uh, prepared for the dig in. What's gonna happen after yeah, Bobby's left, you know, and it caught everybody on the hop a little bit. Yeah, we had um, we got a little bit of success when we got to the semi final of the the Mill Cup against Norwich. Um, oh no! <laughs> like, well, I missed, I missed the semi finals because I'd been sent off um, with Simon Stainlord in the quarter final replay. I remember I that now. Oh, really crikey, really I remember that game at Portman Road. I mean, I've seen some of the worst. I think I know it's a away game. Some of the worst crowd trouble against QPR. I think that was round about that time of yeah. Portman Road, one evening game. Might so then we had the worst referee in display at. Uh, oh, yeah. oh my god! Yeah, you know, yeah. And I was Christ. sitting in the stand, Bobby Ferguson Should have been, should have been, you know, should have been that side. And also, I remember. Tell you what, I do remember a game. Never a penalty. A cup quarter final replay against Everton when um, they, I think they give a penalty against you. Really, really yeah. harshly. Graham Sharp scores. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the the pitch wasn't the best, and it you know it just kicked up and hit me sort of yeah. in, the, in the the stomach and brushed me oh, yeah, arm. Yeah. And yeah, there weren't many people appealed for it. <laughs> I remember that. Do you know what? I just wanted to just remind you of one game, and you know this was not really a great escape as we ended up for it because of the how odd the league was. Eighty three, eighty four. There's a game that you play. You, you have a great two two draw at brilliant two 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 draw at Liverpool. Gate scores an unbelievable goal. And then you, and then I'm not sure if you're aware of this statistic. You go to Old Trafford, I think, on the bank holiday Monday, and you win. You win two one, so a great result, which pretty much guarantees survival. I was there. I remember Devray scoring a really good header, and I think the ball Alan Sunderland scores a winner off his knee. But do you realise that Mark Hughes put Man, put Man U ahead, and that was the last time ever, even in the Premier League, throughout the rest of the Division One as it was then, through the Premier League era. The Man United in a league game have been in front of half time and lost the game. Well, I mean, 
There you go. I didn't know that. <laughs> Apparently, I oh, know. Incredible, incredible, incredible stat. So you know, you know, you know your memory. You know your memories of the time you're leaving. You know Ipswich. I mean, really, I suppose at the end, there's Paul Cooper still there. Um, Terry Butch is still there. Pretty much yourself, I think. George Burley and did you leave round about the same time as George? George Burley and Eric Gates. Are they just about gone then. Oh, Gates, he stayed a bit more longer, didn't he? No, I forget yeah, who, who is who is still there then. Um... Or in the process of going, I mean, I I was quite happy to stay at the club, but you know, I got told that I'd needed to to leave that the club had got no money, and that was that. Um, you know, yeah. that was like the day after uh, we got into the uh, League Cup semi final against Norwich. Uh, oh wow! I went to see Bobby Ferguson, see whether I was going to get uh, fined uh, by the club for getting sent off. Yeah. And um, he told me no. He said, "Do you want to have a, a chat about your contract?" I thought, "Well, okay, yeah, don't oh, mind." And, and <laughs> walked in the office to be told that I could leave. Yeah, and that was it. You know, and it wasn't Bobby Ferguson's fault. You know, no. it wasn't any any no. person's fault uh, in particular. You know, I thought I was going to have a, a testimonial due, but obviously that you know went out the window. Um, yeah. And it was just disappointing that from then on, um, my relationship soured a little bit with Bobby Ferguson because he wouldn't play me in the, the semi-final against Norwich. Yeah. Uh, that hurt. You know, when you're sitting in the stand and you're watching all your teammates get kicked from pillar to post. Oh, no, I mean, that again. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I yeah. think I, I think your central defender defender partner um sort of sorted out the Norris dressing room door and stuff didn't he apparently afterwards and yeah in yeah. frustration apparently yeah yes. terrible mm -hmm. uh, yeah that was yeah that was really really bad and yeah really gone. really bad so so you leave and you you spend you know a, a fair time at Leicester you're about a hundred plus games at Leicester and then on to Southampton you know good memories good memories of those those two clubs yeah very much so uh, I mean my first year at Leicester City ended up with uh Ipswich being relegated. Of course, yeah. You know, so that was disappointing to see that. Then a couple of years later, Leicester got relegated. So I had three years at Leicester. Great fun. I played alongside uh, some fantastic players there. John O'Neill, Northern Irish International. Yeah, Steve, yeah. Walsh, Steve Walsh, great Walsh, fella. Yeah, yeah. Great, great fella. Great <laughs> to, uh, to Leicester City Football Club. And then... Um, then I moved down to Southampton. Uh, we'd been relegated at Leicester, so we're in, I forget what they called it, then the Division 1 or whatever. Yeah, I think it probably was a Canon, Canon League, Division 1 or, League one or something like that. And then um, like that. Chris Nickel wanted uh, to buy me to go and play at Southampton, so I went down there and I had three very enjoyable years playing for, for him at Southampton. So Letitia playing then or not? Yeah, Letizia, um, yeah. Shearer just coming into of the course. Oh, wow. Um, Paul Ryder, yeah. Jimmy. Yeah. Case, uh, Jimmy's oh, just been, yeah. Yeah, Jimmy's just been pretty ill with COVID. Actually, he's been in he uh, really? for a while, so I hope Jimmy's okay. Yeah. Glenn Cockrell, great fella. Glenn Cockrell, yeah, 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 with the, the perm, yeah. Hey, that was a great side. That was a <laughs> good side. Good that could play football and liked a bit of a social as well. Also, some good golf courses on the south coast, Russell. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Stoneham. <laughs> used to be a member of Stoneham, so that's where Matt Letiz plays now. So Where's that? Stoneham, uh, Eastley. Oh, Eastley, yeah, yeah, yeah. I played, yeah, I played Remedy Oak down there. I was fortunate enough to play Remedy Oak down there a couple of years ago. Fantastic place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, of course, if you've got a fade rather than a hook. <laughs> um, and, Brust, and, and then Bristol City, you pretty much end your playing career at Bristol City, some good good couple of seasons down there. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. You know, I had a funny move from Southampton. Ian Brample to taken over from um, Chris Nickel at Southampton. Yeah. And me and Ian just, you know, didn't quite see eye to eye on a few things. Um, and he was a bit naughty the way he behaved in, you know, the way I left the club there. But Bristol City, uh, made up for that and i moved over there in 1990 91 i think 92 and uh i remember phoning my wife after being on <clears throat> being there on loan for the 
first month. I phoned her after the first day and I said, <clears throat> Louise, the training facilities here are absolutely awful. <laughs> I don't think I'll be here a week, never mind a month. And it ended up being 30 years that we stayed there. So, oh, my well, God, of course. Of course, you stayed, you so stayed I, down there. Nice. I know it's quite well. Nice, nice, part of the, nice part of the world down there. Yeah, yeah. I lived right opposite the suspension bridge. So, I'm in Clifton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I looked at that every morning out my kitchen fantastic. window. Fantastic, fantastic, yeah. fantastic. And then, and then, obviously, Bristol City. You had your sort of first foray into management. Yes, um, we had a manager called Dennis Smith. He used to play at Stoke City. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dennis came in, and Dennis, to be honest, between me, you, and the gate post, he was hopeless. <laughs> um, and. Uh, <clears throat> It didn't last very long there. And they, they put like uh, two or three of the players together, myself, Mark Hazelwood, and yeah. um, I think it was Gary Shelton to take yeah, charge. Of players, of yeah. Yeah. Which is fine. And then uh, um, they, they'd asked me to be assistant to, um, to Dennis Smith. So when he took over, I was assistant to Dennis Smith when, when he took over. And uh, when he left, you know, they they gave me the job, and we went pretty well. We didn't have a lot of money. Um, we were punching above our weight. We'd not Liverpool out of the FA Cup in, in February in the what was that the fourth round? Um, That's right. After holding them to a draw down at Ashton Gate, we had a floodlight failure. We had a replay, which we drew. <laughs> we then. Won the replay 1-0 with a Brian Tinian goal up at Anfield, which was a wonderful experience. Because um, I think, I want to say they were the cup holders as well, I think. Well, they, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, possibly. But yeah. And Andy Cole was a player there. So one of the first things I had to do was allow Andy to uh, leave to go to Newcastle United. They came in and made a very healthy bid for him so <laughs> off he went he was he was great for bristol city uh, um and then we had a new board of directors move in and yeah. they wanted their own manager in um sure they appointed joe jordan i get on fine with joe joe's a very nice man and you know i see his kids i coast his kids when i was down there um you know and it was just a shame it, it, you lose your job when you've done nothing wrong yeah. You know, we were quite yeah. competitive, and but that's football management for you. You know, there's one thing certain is that you you got to get a sack and went down the line. <laughs> and then, and then you spent you have a brief spell at I think caretaker at Plymouth, and then on to Cardiff, Bristol Rovers, and a, a spell at Exeter as well. Yeah, yeah, I did a little bit at um, Plymouth because Steve McCall. Was assistant to Peter Shilton. Oh, Shilton course, been yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to take over. I was, Steve asked me if I could help him um, for a couple of weeks. Um, I still got the court case going on with Bristol City. I said, "Yeah, you know, but I can't earn anything out of it." You know. I'm, yeah. Um, and then the morning I'm driving down, Steve resigned without taking charge of a day's training. So the chairman then phoned me, Dan McCauley phoned me and asked me if I'd just carry on coming down and take the last few games for the club. And we very nearly, you know, avoided relegation. You know, we, yeah. we won three out of the last four games or something, but got pipped on the final day by, I'm sure it was Wickham or somebody. Uh -huh. um, and then, uh, you know, I, I played a little bit of Brighton as well for Liam Brady. Then... I played a bit of Cardiff and ended up going back to Cardiff as the manager for a while. Um, it didn't work out great, you know, so it was time to move on again. Yeah, sure, sure. And then and then a spell back here, a spell back here in 2011 for a couple of seasons as under-18 coach. Yeah, I'd worked uh, back in the academy at Bristol City for a while and then Paul Jewell uh, offered me the chance to come back and work in the academy at Ipswich, mm -hmm. which was terrific. But this this was the year before the elite player performance program. Mm -hmm. So 
for example, I would take a squad of players uh, to go and play Tottenham. Um, and it would be like 15 players, me and Jimmy Reynolds, the physio. Yeah. The following year, it would be me, two physios, sports scientists, strength and conditioning coach, sports psychologist, uh, three analysts. And, oh, I got... You have to wonder. Players, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and 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 then following, and then a bit of a short spell with um with Terry Butcher at, at Newport, which didn't really work out. Yeah, um, the year before I'd I'd been in India doing the Indian Super League, and then uh, I've been asked to do the Super League again, and, and at the same time that Terry got the job at Newport, Newport to Bristol is, you know, yeah, twenty minute no. drive over the bridge. Yeah, that's about it. So yeah. I agreed to go with Terry in there. And I don't think either of us realised what a mess the club was in right. when we got there. Mm. If, you can, if you can imagine myself and Terry decorating <laughs> the changing rooms yeah. in time for pre-season training, uh, picking up a dozen big bags of ice every morning on the way to training from the local superstore. Yeah. Going out and getting the food, getting the drinks in, stocking the, 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 the kitchen with necessities on a daily basis, trying to find somewhere to train on a daily basis. Oh, yeah, it's, so you know, not um, ideal. So you were painter, decorator, ice maker, um, <laughs> kit man, yeah. laundry, yeah, you know we're doing doing everything, you know, and turn around at the end of the day and Terry gets no credit for anything he did there. You know, they just look at the results and say, well, you know, that's yeah. not good enough. And so, yeah, you know, so harsh world, harsh world yeah. of football. Also, I'd be remiss on me just to mention your um, obviously your England career, eleven eleven games for England. Um, you know, good memories of that. Yeah, very good. Um, just very disappointing that um, to Bobby told me my last game was my best ever game for, for England and never picked me again after that. <laughs> and I mean, and, and obviously left out of the 22 for the 82 World Cup. I think they took Steve Foster instead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and... <laughs> I mean, just, you know, to me, it just seems incredible, really. And, you know, the fact that, you know, I know Phil Thompson was still, obviously, Phil Thompson was, I think, played alongside Terry, didn't he, that, that World Cup? Yeah, I, I played alongside Phil. I played alongside Dave Watson. Um, I played alongside Terry. I think I only played two or three international games alongside Terry out of the 11 yeah. caps I had, and most of those were in Australia. Um you know, to be left out by Ron Greenwood in, you know, nothing against Steve Foster, but, you know, you pick somebody with one cap and leave somebody with 11 caps out. Um, yeah, and you were no, fit going into that, yeah? Sorry? You were fit. You were, you were, you know, it wasn't as if you were, you know, carrying injuries that season, were you? I mean, we talked no, spoke about that 81, 82, 82 no. season. Yeah, it just seems a, fit yeah. A yeah, yeah. A fiddle. you know, I'd, I'd gone through a series of playing something like, well, I played 66 games in the 80-81 season. I, I, I think I played something like 125, 126 games consecutively without missing a, a game through yeah, injury. As a centre back, that is some, that is some, some achievement. And Eric Gates was obviously left out. I mean, he only had a couple of caps, but obviously Eric Eric Gates was left out also. I Russell, think just quick, been a bit of pressure. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. Just quickly, how did um, just a couple of things? How did the um, you know the 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 stuff with the Indian Premier League come about? Um, I I've, I've been going out to India for about 16, 14, 16 years. Oh, okay, I've, you know, what, I coaching, worked, uh, coaching or no uh, media work. So oh, right. I, I okay. worked with. Um, with Eurosport for a long time. Right. You know, I worked, worked with Eurosport for about 20 odd years. Mm -hmm. And one of the ex producers was working in India for a company called Z Sports. And Z Sport were uh, covering one of the um, tournaments out there, the Santosh Trophy, I think it was. 
and they asked me if I would go out there and do some co-commentary. And I went out there uh, and worked with a fella called John Helm. John Helm is a talks, magnificent yeah. fella. <laughs> Wonderful fellow, who's 74, he's just done a stint in India now. He's done, he really? yeah. he's done about 30, 40 games of the yeah. in Jubilee this year. So, you know, we went out there and we did Santos Trophy. We did a, another couple of tournaments for them. Um, and then as things happened, IMG were involved with it all and some of the staff of my IMG were involved with the setup of... Uh, the Indian Super League back in 2013 uh, and obviously they needed um, a couple of co co commentators and commentators and they asked me if I'd be <clears throat> interested in doing it and in this first year there's eight teams I think um, and they meant flying all over India you know wow. you, you do a game in Goa you fly out the next day uh, back up right. to Mumbai, then you fly to Guwahati, you have to be in the northeast and down to Calcutta, then back to Delhi. And I think it was something like uh, 40 flights in 60 days. Oh, huge. Yeah, huge. You know, so it was a bit of grit and bear it in those and days. And is football, is football growing and developing out there? I mean, obviously, cricket is very much their national sport, but is, is football developing out there still? Very much so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a big league now. They 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 just uh, finished the league stage of um, ISL six, which is this you know this current season. Um, we, they did have marquee players over the first few years. People like uh, David Trezeguet and um, oh yeah, of and, course, uh, Devere, Spanish player. Yeah, and, Cap de Vier, uh, yeah, left back, yeah. El Piero, uh, people like that. You know, yeah, and that yeah. got the game going. David James. Went out yeah. from England, he went to Kerala Blasters. Um, so they had some very good players out there, but they've dropped the, the need for the marquee players now. And, uh, you know, the, the league stands on its own and, feet now because of the quality of the football. And there's some good players out there you could see that would be potentially good enough to play over here? It won't be long. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. You know, they've introduced academy football um, into most of the big clubs. Um, the City Group bought Mumbai City last year. So a, and lot of investment, just, a lot of investment. They've just, won yeah. the league. they've just won the league this year. They're now going yeah. to the playoffs. Um, yeah. so big feather in the cap for uh, Damien Willoughby and the um, City Group people out there. That's a massive achievement for them. Yeah. Um, so it's all it's all looking very good, you know. They've got they've got some good young players coming through, but what yeah. they've got to do, they've got to remember that these good young players have got to perform year after year after year, not just yeah. one year. And because yeah. they end up with you know twenty million followers on social media, that they've made it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. They get no, that's, in that's interesting. And <clears throat> is, is the interest as it is? I've never been to India, but I've been to the far east, been to the far east quite a bit. Um, is the interest in the Premier League, you know, the English game, as as big in India as it is, oh, yeah. you know, in the rest of the far east? Massive, massive. Yeah, huge, you you yeah. know, when we're there, we we watch every Premier League game. Yeah, that is that is available. You know, it's it's in a different bar on the big screen or in the yeah. hotel or or wherever. You know, and there's yeah. always crowds watching. Yeah. Um, yeah, very good. Big supporters clubs there for the obvious teams, your Man City, your Man United, your, your Liverpool, yeah. you know, so big supporters. Just, and Russell, just very much before we go, it's been an absolute pleasure. Just your, your current take on things at Portman Road, new manager, um, you know, breath of fresh air for the club, what the club needs. Yeah, um, on. new manager, great. Um, I, I don't know. Paul Cook, but I, I think Paul Lambert needed to step aside. I think he'd lost it, some of the players and uh, they'd lost a little bit of belief in him. He's causing problems with the supporters. They weren't um, enjoying listening to him or watching the type of football he played. Um, how Paul Cook does, I don't know, but he's... he's Obviously, bought bought a good uh, track record with him. You know, he knows the league. He knows what you have to do to get promotion. Um, 
so you stand back and you you know some of the players will thrive under him you know and let's hope he just yeah. which is matt gill's done a fantastic job over the last few weeks by the way no yeah, i agree yeah. i mean yeah it's, it's, it's unusual it's unusual you know for a new manager to actually come in now and actually you know they talk about the new manager bounce don't you but you know they're coming actually on some good feeling with the club we've finally managed to put that hoodoo to bed of not beating a team above us all in the top yeah. 10 or top eight above us you know three yeah. games on the trot five unbeaten now um yeah. you can start to see it's pretty unusual for a manager you know new manager to come into that really isn't it you can see some momentum already yeah but like we said earlier you know played the same side four games back to back yeah you know yeah. paul lambert was saying we can't we can't do this we can't do that those players can't play two games in a week you know teddy bishop played four games yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. doing the same. Yeah, need need it too. They need it. Yeah. You know, Luke Chambers was criticised because he was he was getting too old for his apparently. You know, only three weeks ago. Yeah. Luke yeah. Can play all day long. He's a seasoned pro. That's no problem. He'll play as many games as you want to put in front of him. Um, I just think the next stage is going to be vital with the yeah. takeover. You know, it looks like the takeover is going to go ahead by all rumours and whispers and stuff like that. And I think that's what is going to make the difference to the club. A new manager going in, it'll make a difference to the players, mm. the playing staff, the surrounding staff at the club, fine. But the manager is not going to improve Portman Road. Sure, yeah. He's not going to improve the training ground. All that comes down from the ownership of the club. The environment needs livening up yeah. down Portman Road and the training. Well, it, and you're right, you know, you go down to Portman Road and it all looks a bit, you know, if you look closely at it, it all looks, you know, fantastic ground. You know, you, you're inside the ground, looking at the pitch, the stands. You know, it's a upper championship Premier League ground, isn't it? But if you look closely at it, it's it's a bit shabby, right. isn't it? A bit sad yeah, and right, run down. Yeah. 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 You're seeing better days as it is at the moment and you need somebody to come in and, Put an arm around the club and say, "Listen, we're going to get you back on your on two feet again. Give you a little bit of a shot in the arm of injection of money and stuff like that, and make you make you look the part anyway." Yeah, well, here's here's hoping. Russell, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for sparing the time, my friend. It's been a real pleasure, and my pleasure. you know, great great for me to reminisce on the um, and I say I bore to death all my podcast colleagues with stories of well back in 80 81 and when it was 80 81 so it's great to hear someone who's you know well 66 games absolute legend thanks ever so much for that really appreciate no it we can talk Cheers, about golf next time. thanks okay. a lot